So you've just picked up Farming Simulator 22, and you're ready to jump right into your very first start from scratch map on hard mode with seasons turned on. What do you do? Hello, this is Breuer, and today I'm going to be walking you through some of the steps and overall guidelines for how to start a successful start from scratch hard mode map. I've learned a lot of mistakes myself, so I'm going to share some of those with you. Uh, but let's get right into it. Number one. Look good, play good. The most important thing of any game you start with is to make sure your character looks as good as it possibly can. I mean, there's a lot of choices in here in Farming Simulator. Make it look just the way you want it to. Because if you look good, you play good, that's just a known fact. I think it gives you at least a 0.01% increase in overall yields on your fields if your character looks good. Number two. Choose the right field. All right, so you've spawned right in. You're ready to get playing. What is the first thing that you need to do? You've got to find a place to call home. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a tip. The starting location is not the place that you want to call home if you want to make the most money and most bang for your buck. You just don't get enough field for what you're paying for. So what is it that you want to look for? Well, let's jump right into the field location map and or the map itself and see what kind of locations we want to look for that will be beneficial to us. The first tip I'm going to give you is find a field that has the least amount of green space. You're going to pay for any green space that you have. For example, if you come down here to field 71, um, you're going to be paying a lot of money for this field because you're getting a lot of green space around the edges and across the road and everything like that. That's space that you can't use for your field. Unless you want to do trees or grass or something like that, it's completely useless space. Um, for example, field number 70 here, another field, very large field, $772,000 because it has all of this extra green space. So what are the best fields to find on this map, for example? Field number 50 is a really great field. Very little green space, most bang for your buck. Field number 51, another one. Very, very good little green space, most bang for your buck. Actually, 50 is the best acre per dollar field on this map. 51 is a close second. And um, some of these others that I'm going to show you are very right up there in the top five or six as well. 68 is one of the best fields on this map to pick as well. Very little green space, a very large field, and it's going to give you a ton of yield. Obviously, it's very expensive. You're paying for all of that. Uh, field number 32, it's a little bit of an awkward shape, but it's still another one that's got a little bit of green space at the top, but most of the field, most of the uh, what you're buying is used up by the field itself. Field number 10 is another decent one. A little bit of green space around the edges. It's a little of an awkward shape. I don't personally like this field myself, but it's another one that would jump right out there and be a good one for you. Fields 33 and 34 are pretty okay. They're up there, I think, in the top 10. Um... But again, 34 is a little bit of an awkward shape. Um, so I personally don't like this one as much, but it is another good one to pick up. So again, that's your, your tip is try to get as little green space as possible. Now, if you want to do production facilities, I would still pick up one of these fields that has a little bit of green space. And the reason I would do that is because I can just put a production facility in the top corner or something like that, or maybe a couple of them along the top edges and still have plenty of field left over, still maximizing as much as I want. And I'm going to be good to go. Um, if I were to pick up 32, for example, you might be able to put some, some production facilities up here in the top corner. 33 might give you some space up here as well, but these other ones, you will have to use up a little bit of your field for those production facilities, but I'd much rather do that than pick up say 20 and 21 and have almost the entire thing being not fields. Uh, that's way more production space than we, we need. And I would not recommend these 22, 23, 24, another one, unless you're just really into the trees and all that kind of stuff not really much bang for your buck. So there you go. Choose the right field. Number three, pick the right crop and production chain and keep it simple. All right. What is the right crop to go for in a start from scratch hard mode game? Well, that's a little bit of a mixed question. There's a lot of answers to that, but I'll go through some of the pros and cons of various crops. For one, I may personally not touch grapes or olives. They're way too expensive up front and way too hard to work with, in my opinion. I also, I'm not going to cover grass or poplar or any of those things. If you like to do the, the trees or the grass and the silage, more power to you. Those are going to be good for you, but I'm going to keep it to some of the more basic crops. 
Uh, sugarcane is also another one that I'm immediately going to eliminate because sugarcane is an annoying crop to work with, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, sure, you can plant it down and it grows and grows and grows and you never have to plant it again. But the harvesting equipment is like two meters wide and takes forever to harvest any size field that's worth anything. And in my opinion, it's just not a lot of fun. So I'm going to stick with the other crops. A couple other crops that I will uh, point out, but I am going to include in my list are potatoes, uh, sugar beets, and cotton. All three of those are special crops, in my opinion. And what I mean by special is, if you have a field that is too small, you probably don't want to do one of those crops. If I've got field number 44 here, I'm not doing cotton, sugar beets, or potatoes on that one because the price of the equipment is way more than the yield that I would get off that field. Now, if I had field 68, that's another thing entirely. I'm going to get way more yield back from the 68 harvest than it would cost me to at least initially lease the equipment or even, you know, potentially buy the equipment someday. So depending on the size of the fields, those might be included or discluded, or I should say excluded from your, from your list. Um, the other crops that you could look at would be uh, things like soybeans. Soybeans are really good. Um, sunflowers, uh, oats, canola, all the grain crops, things like that. All of those can be good in their own way. Um, but I would recommend definitely look at the production chains. Production chains are in the game for a reason. In fact, if we come in here and we look over here at the, um, the list of production chains, oh, wrong button. <laughs> if we look at the list of production chains here, we can come over here to the production tab and you can see all the different factories and all the different production chains. Production chains are in the game for a reason. They're very much highlighted in the game and they are definitely worth doing, using if you can. Um, if you have a crop that can use production chains, I highly recommend it. Personally, here is my list of crops that I would go for in this order. First and foremost would be sugar beets. And the reason I would do sugar beets is because it's a very straightforward uh, move from sugar beets to, uh, where is it, the sugar? There we go, sugar mill. From sugar beets to sugar takes one step. And sugar beets is one of those crops that on a big enough field, you can get a lot of money from, and then the sugar makes it that much better. It is one of the best crops you can do just straight up with one step process. The second one I would do is actually a little bit of a surprise to me. It's actually cotton. Cotton, the reason I would do this one is because it's still pretty straightforward. You first you do from the spinnery, you put in cotton and you get the linen out. And then from the linen, or I think it's, uh, what is it, fabric or whatever it is. And then from that, you put that into the tailor shop. So only two steps, still one crop. You only have to do two steps. And once you get the clothes coming out the other side, they are worth a lot of money. So on a big enough field, cotton can be well worth it if you put those two production chains down and you're good to go. Uh, a couple of other ones that would be useful would be um, things like either sunflower or canola turning it into oil. It's not one of the best, but it is useful and you can still get a profit from that. And it can be, if you're going to start with a smaller field, it might be a better way to go. Another one would be um, doing the grain mill into flour and then buying the bakery and turning that into bread. I would avoid the cakes because the cakes has a lot of other stuff going into it, but uh, grain to flour to bread can be profitable. It's not quite as profitable as um, sugar beets or cotton, but it can be profitable and it can be another way to go if you want to start on a smaller field and you don't have to buy a lot of the more expensive sugar beet or cotton uh, equipment. Uh, potatoes, there is not a production chain for as far as I know, um, but it can also be profitable just to do potatoes on a big enough field and just sell off the pota potatoes and then you're done. So those are my, my tips about picking the right crop. Personally, if I was going to do a start from scratch map, I would pick a big field and do sugar beets going right into sugar or do cotton and go all the way up to cloth. Number four. Buy your main tractor, but lease everything else. All right, it might seem a little counterintuitive to only buy one piece of equipment and lease everything else, but the leasing costs in this game are pretty manageable if you follow a very specific rule. Only lease for the month that you're actually going to use the equipment and get rid of it all the rest of the months. For example, if I were to come in here and we were to look at the calendar, let's say I was going to do sugar beets. The only time I can plant sugar beets is in March or April if I've got seasons turned on. I'm, I'm obviously going to pick one of those two months to plant. I'm not going to do both. So the only time I ever need a planter for sugar beets is say is March. After March, I can get rid of that planter and then I'm done. The only time I can harvest sugar beets is in October or November. Let's say October. I harvest everything in October. I don't need it after that. Same thing with a plow, 
Same thing with the trailer. Same thing with fertilizer, although you might actually use fertilizer twice a year, uh, depending on how your cedar works, but that's okay. You're still only gonna use it a couple months of the year, and then all the rest of the year, you're not gonna use it at all. So all the equipment, except your main tractor, is only really gonna be used one time out of the year. Lease it that one month, and then get rid of it. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit of annoying to have to go back to the store and pick it up every time, but it's still gonna save you a lot of money. Now, as far as the tractors that you wanna get, depending on what size field you get, that kind of dictates what size tractor you need. Uh, and the reason I say that is, if you've got a huge field, you're not gonna want to, want to run the tiniest plow possible. You're gonna wanna run a big plow, and big plows need big equipment. Now, if you're using a smaller field, you can get by with a smaller tractor and a smaller plow and a smaller cultivator or whatever you decide to use, smaller cedar, stuff like that. So depending on the size of field that you chose, that would really dictate the size of uh, tractor that you end up getting. For me personally, if I was gonna do a start from scratch map, I would buy field 68 and I would get me a big old beefy tractor. Now, how am I gonna pay for this big beefy tractor if I just did a, uh, just bought the giant field? Well, here's the cool thing about this. If I'm gonna do sugar beets, which again is my suggestion, I have, you start the game in August. You can't plant sugar beets until March. My suggestion is do some contracts until it comes time to actually do anything with your field. Your field's just gonna be sitting there doing nothing anyway. Do some contracts until it comes time to do something with your field. And hopefully you should, if you can do about $15,000, $20,000 worth of contracts each month, you should have enough money with whatever's left over from your initial money to go ahead and purchase uh, a good sized tractor. Uh, for example, you can come over here and purchase, let's say this tractor right here, $217,000. It's got 375 horsepower. That's more than enough for any of the plows or the cedars or anything like that. Now you could, if you decide to do a few extra contracts or you got a little bit lucky with contracts, you could always pick up one of the other pieces of equipment that maybe you like better, but $217,000 should not take you long to come up with the money for. And you can max out your money a little bit because you're not gonna need your harvester. You're not gonna need a lot of your other things right away. You can still do more contracts between um, when you set up your field and when you actually harvest to actually go ahead and pay for the leases for those. So I would pick up one of these big old nice beefy tractors depending on the size of the field that you do and then come back in here and lease basically everything else. For example, if I were to come in here and do sugar beets, the Panther 2 right here is probably one of the ones I would lease. Uh, if I had enough, I might do the Tiger 6S, but the Panther 2 is good enough for me and I come in here and I can lease this thing for $19,000. Now $19,000 sounds like a lot of money, but Field 68, I happen to know, gives you around about $100,000 worth of yield in one year if you turn it into sugar. Okay, $100,000 minus $19,000 still gives you a lot of money to play around with. So you're gonna be just fine if you, uh, if you go ahead and lease the harvester because you're getting plenty of yield back for that. Now, if you have a smaller field, don't do sugar beets. It's not worth it. But big fields, definitely worth it. Um, just a little bit of a note, if you didn't know this already, it is about 19.6 times cheaper to lease a piece of equipment than it is to buy it. And maybe you put that another way, it would take you right about 20 times of leasing before you've actually spent as much money as it would have cost you to buy the piece of equipment. So if you're only gonna use something 10 times before you start seeing some profit, well, you might as well lease it. Now, if you're gonna have to use something 40 times before you can start seeing profit from something, well, then you're probably better off trying to save up some money and buy that piece of equipment. But initially, lease everything you can, buy your main tractor, and that's it. Number five. The only exception I would make to rule number four is to shop the used store as much as you can and also hold on to a little bit of extra money so that you can buy what you need when you see it pop up. The used store is a great addition to Farming Simulator 22 and it's gonna give you a great way to come up with some of the really expensive equipment at a much discounted price. So if we come in here, you can see where the, all the vehicles are. If you come down here to the bottom or like about halfway down, you've got the used vehicle sale. And we're already seeing a couple vehicles here that might be worth something. I don't know. I mean, there's a hydro trike. I don't know if I really like that, but if you want to do um, a different alternative way of fertilizing your field, you might pick something like that up. Uh, we've got a little tractor that might be a little too small for some of the bigger fields, but we do have a mulcher over here. Now, if you're doing a crop that needs mulching, this is a pretty good size mulcher and it's at a very, very good price. So I would absolutely recommend shopping the used vehicle sale as much as you can, because that's gonna help you get closer to that uh, having everything paid for and profit after that 
um, than you would if you just buy everything brand new all the time. So there you go. Keep an eye on the used store as much as you can. Number six. Invest in more fields before you pay off your loan or purchase non-used equipment. All right, this might sound like a little bit of a crazy tip, but it actually works out to your favor uh, within reason. If you follow the same rules as rule number two of choosing the right field, when you choose future fields, you are way better off continuing to use your money that you've got, any money you've gotten in from your, your yields to purchase more fields, because that's gonna get you even more yields to be able to buy more stuff or do more stuff with it than it would if you were to pay off your loan or stop doing leased equipment and start buying equipment right away. So keep buying fields until you get to a comfortable spot or where maybe you're at a spot where you couldn't do all the fields in one day, something like that, and hold off on purchasing that equipment. Because if you think of it this way, if it costs you $20,000, to lease the equipment for sugar beets. Well, if you have two field 68s, for example, which I mean, there's not on this map, but if let's say you had enough fields to counter, you know, two, two 68s, well, then that $20,000 can be used for both of those fields and you're making even more profit per cycle than you would be with the one field alone. If the one field by itself is already worth doing with just leasing, then more fields is also worth doing with just leasing. Uh, the same holds true for the loan. The loan only costs you $1,666 per month if you've maxed it out at $500,000. That's a little bit less than $20,000 a year. If you buy a second field of a decent size, if I had field 68 and I bought, say, I don't know, field, let's say field 69 right next to it. It's not a good shape, but it's a good size field. It's going to give me enough yield to pay for that loan and then some. So it's always better to buy more fields than it is to uh, pay off your loan or buy non uh, non used equipment i should say number seven this may sound obvious but do contracts to speed things up contracts in this game tend to be very lucrative and worth doing almost all the time there are a few contracts i would probably stay away from a little bit unless you have the right size of equipment for example some of the plowing contracts can take forever some of the cultivating contracts can take it forever unless you have the right piece of equipment like a big piece of equipment to do them with but harvesting contracts are almost always worth doing Fertilizing contracts are almost always worth doing. Um, spraying contracts are almost worth doing. And baling contracts are like the golden goose. I mean, they give you so much from baling contracts. Do those every chance that you get. And if you already have some equipment, if you did get work your way up to being able to buy some very large plows or very large cultivators, you might go ahead and pick up some of those types of contracts. But I usually stay away from those unless I get a contract that gives me a big enough piece of equipment to make it worth my while. But as far as contracts are concerned, you can do everything that I just told you and avoid contracts altogether and still be profitable. If I had field 68 here, um, I can still be profitable without doing a single contract other than maybe the first few to get that first tractor. Once I got that first tractor, everything down is downhill from there. I don't have to do another contract ever again and I can still be profitable year over year. However, if I wanna speed that up, because right now I did a little bit of the math. If I don't do any contracts, Field 68 will be profitable in about 17-ish years, um, which is a long time, to be fair. But it's still going to be profitable at some point. Now, if I start doing some contracts and throw some few contracts in there, if I just did $60,000 worth of contracts a year, that's $5,000 a month. That's easy mode. Uh, I could speed that up to about 10 years. If I do $120,000 contracts a year, that's $10,000 average per month. I can get that down to like four or five years before I'm profitable. And what I mean by profitable, I mean, I've made enough money that I've paid for the cost of the field. I've paid for the cost of the production facility. I've paid for that cost of that first tractor. And then everything else after that, I can do whatever I want. I can start buying equipment solely, but surely I can buy more fields, which is recommended from the previous step, or I can do whatever I want. So doing contracts can speed things up. It's not required. It's not necessary. It's not mandatory but you can speed things up by doing a few contracts along the way um, and make your life quite a bit easier. Well, there you go, guys. Seven easy steps to follow to be profitable on a start from scratch, hard mode map. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. A couple other tips I might throw out there is have some fun with the game. I mean, if you don't want to do sugar beets, don't do sugar beets. If you don't want to do whatever X, Y, Z, don't do it. Have fun with the game. Do whatever you want to do. Enjoy it. But these are just some tips that will help you along the way to be profitable that much faster if that's something that you find enjoyment in. I will say, if you're going to be playing on easy or normal mode, all of my tips are still applicable. 
uh, they just come to fruition that much quicker. If you're on easy mode, it only takes a couple years to pay off a field of like size 68, for example, because you get three times the value for your crop. If you like this content and want to see more of it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, become a member. That's an awesome way to show your support. And uh, please let me know what you think in the comments below. I do appreciate it. Thank you and goodbye. I wanted to give a special shout out to our first channel member ever, Telrenar. Thank you so much for supporting the channel.